pony she must swim, the horse he must trot, and the girl she must slim. Let's all join together, hoof in hoof, hand in hand, fin in fin, wing in wing, it's a very good plan. Let's build a love state, yeah, here in Notting Hill Gate. Chased by those builders again, then. <laughs> they just seem to hate me just because I've got uh, long hair, I think. <laughs> what are you doing, Alex? What? I'm, I, I'm doing what I normally do. Which is what? What? <laughs> do, do you think it will kill you to just once, you know, once give me a hand? <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me, actually, something very funny happened yesterday. Um, my, uh, my father's hand tends to uh, blow up during the warm weather. What well, hand uh, explodes? No, no, no. no. no it just enlarges, you see. It's extraordinary. Alex, and, um, I am writing an article about the Black Panthers here, OK? I want to hear interesting subjects for articles, fresh ideas for the magazine. I do not want to hear what shape your father's hand mutates into during the summer months. Mm. There's some serious changes have to be made here, you know? I think putting up the price of the magazine was a change, but I don't think it was a good change. Yeah, well, people are hardly going to stop buying the magazine just because we put it up by a penny, you know? I just... I get so frustrated, you know? I just... I could... I could... Yes, it's uh, through there. <laughs> Who's that kid, Hugo? That's Adrian. He's my son. <laughs> I, I didn't know you had any kids. No, neither did I. He, he just uh, turned up on my doorstep this morning with a note which said, This is Adrian. He's your son. It's time for you to take responsibility. So I'm going to have to teach him all about road safety and algebra, <laughs> girls, and, of course, um, tricks with kites. <laughs> Hugo, um, how old is he? Twelve. And uh, how old are you? Twenty. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Yep. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Adrian. Hello. I'm Ray Purbs, and uh, I'm the editor of Math Magazine. And um, I was just wondering, how did you find out that Hugo was your daddy? Mum just gave me a note and told me to go to 63 Wenlick Road. Wen Wenlick Road, which is definitely my address. I can't figure it out, Ray. Right, here's the thing. You only moved into that house yesterday. <laughs> so, wh wh what are you getting at, Ray? I think Ray's actually suggesting that Adrian's father is, in fact, the previous occupant. No, well, that can't be that, can it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> You said you were the guys from Mouth magazine. Yes, have you, uh, have you read it? Yeah, but it's not really my scene. My friends and I find it rather... insipid. <laughs> steady on. Yeah, steady on. You little whippersnapper. Don't do that. Sorry. Seriously, don't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, don't do that, Rose. It's a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you think it's insipid? Yes. And I think you're going to lose readers with this price increase. <laughs> Incidentally, that's not Noel Redding, that's Mitch Mitchell. You've got the wrong caption on the photograph. Your dad got called a hippie today. <laughs> His barber's not so well, so he couldn't get a haircut. What's wrong with him, love? He killed himself. Oh, dear. Why did you do that, then? He was going out of business. No one wants haircuts cuts anymore. Thanks to these bloody hippies. 
Never mind. I'm sure I'll be back in business before long. <laughs> hey! You've got nose hair! <laughs> yeah, well, it's not uncommon, Mum. Yeah, but it's old man's nose hair. <laughs> like your dad's! <laughs> Do you remember the first time we spotted your old man's nose hair, love? Do you remember? Look, right, look. <laughs> Lovely souvenir of the onset of one's later years. <laughs> Happy times indeed. Dad's sprouting hair all over the shop, me going through the change. <laughs> <laughs> What's that other thing you got, love? Impudence, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not being able to point at me without using your hands. <laughs> Do you know, right? There was a time when your dad could have directed traffic with it. <laughs> well, never let me forget that, will you? Well, it was a memorable moment, love. <laughs> yeah, we're all getting old, aren't we, Ray? Yes, we are, Mum. I'm an adult now. And sometimes that responsibility, the responsibility of being an adult, can sometimes be, quite frankly, overwhelming. <laughs> I'm going to go now. Oh, all right, love. Well, look. Here's your laundry. All <laughs> oh, nice and fresh. Thanks, Mum. Mum. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, desperate down. <laughs> he really does get up to some cowboy mystery. <laughs> Look at the size of that cow pie. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think of what? You haven't actually explained the idea yet. You've just said, uh, what do you think? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I just I got very excited about the idea. And I said, what do you think? And I didn't tell you what it was. <laughs> I hope this isn't going to be another example of your over-enthusiasm and occasional recklessness, Ray. I am not over-enthusiastic and occasionally reckless, Jill. Yes, you are. Don't you remember? Phew, it's hot. What are you doing, Ray? Well, you know, it's just so rare that we get weather like this. I thought I'd get out these really high-powered binoculars and stare at the sun for ages. <laughs> Three hours now. Isn't that a bit dangerous? Oh, honestly, Jill, it's not dangerous. People are so ultra-cautious these days. <laughs> so, what is the idea? Right, well, OK, here we go. And you're going to love this, all right? The next issue of the magazine, yeah, we hand over to a bunch of school kids, right? We give them total editorial control and we don't look at the magazine until it's in the shops. What do you think, Jill? I'm going to use this to extinguish your mad idea, Ray. Well, Jill, you don't even know how to use that. And if you think I'm going to let you cover me with water... <laughs> What do you think? I would strongly advise against this course of action, Rhett. Um, in fact, if I was the sort of man to get down on my knees, I would be down there now, on my knees, literally begging you not to do it. Right, well, it's a good job you're not the kind of man that would be on his knees, then. Certainly is, Ray, yes. I haven't been on my knees since I boarded up a mouse hole in 1965. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like it then, I don't like it now. But, uh, you know, I think the fact that I'm, I'm even considering it shows just how opposed to the idea I actually am. Right. <laughs> But uh, I'm right in thinking that, in principle, you kind of like the idea. Yes, Cynthia. Well, it depends what your definition of infantile is, doesn't it? You know, and no, it isn't a criminal offence. You... No, well, I've got to go, Cynthia, OK? Bye-bye. 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 She is such a fat lesbian. <laughs> Who is? Um, my mum. <laughs> Cup of tea. Can we get some sugar in this? Right, yes, sorry. Um... Get him to do it. He doesn't seem to do anything else. Hey, you! <laughs> sorry? Put some sugar in this, will you? <laughs> I think this issue of the magazine will really freak people out. Yeah, this issue's really gonna do that. <laughs> Once, I got this frog. I stuck a huge firework up his ass and I lit it. <laughs> it was really great. Stupid frog was blown to bits. There was nothing left of him, except a bit of one of his eyes. That really freaked him out. Yeah, I suppose it did. <laughs> there we are. 
Oh, um, you won't go down to the shops and get me this week's topper, would you? Yes, Alex, it's a comic. Go on. Um, I haven't actually got any money on me. Uh. You couldn't give me a little extra for cigarettes, could you? It's very unhealthy to smoke. Um, yeah. Go on. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, since you're here, I might as well give you a big old tour of the office, shall I? Show you what's going on. Um, this is the layout desk, OK? This is where the magazine is laid out. <laughs> right? That's where you're working now. And if I tootle over here, this is the typewriter, and this... That's where we do all our articles. And here is the stationery drawer. And in here, there's stationery. And uh, this is Jill, and she is a woman. I'm not an object, Ray. Don't lump me in with a typewriter and stationery drawer. Just remember, women are going to be the men of the 21st century. What's that supposed to mean, eh? Oh, come on, Ray. Even these kids know what that means. No, I don't. Yeah, what's she on about? Well, I mean, um, that the gender pecking order in uh, tomorrow's world is going to be very much, well, the glove is going to be um, very much on the other foot. In future, people are going to be wearing gloves on feet. <laughs> You're mental. Well, I, I didn't actually see that particular edition of Tomorrow's World, but um, I'm sure that the future will be full of that kind of stuff. <laughs> We'd better go. And you promise you won't look at the finished artwork until it's printed and in the shops? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the whole idea. Great, we'll go yeah. then. Bye. Bye. There we are. Cheers, thanks very much. I have to say, Alex, I find those kids slightly frightening. Mm. Now, are you sure we shouldn't just have a little look at the artwork just before we, we send it off to the printers? Alex? Alex, 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 Alex. Alex, 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 Oh, you're back! Great! Oh, fantastic issues. Right, I just hope when we, you know, see what they've done that you won't regret it. Yeah, I bet you a million pounds that I won't regret it, OK? In fact, even if I win, you don't have to give me anything, right? But if I regret it, I will give you one million pounds. I've just got this image of you after you've seen the magazine saying... You know, I didn't really mean the million pound thing, it was just a joke. That's not going to happen, Alex, OK? We've got a deal? Deal? All oh, right, OK. Let's have a look. I begged you not to do it. So did I. Yeah, I but... also wrote to you via the newspapers. I put posters up in your room saying, uh, please, Ray, don't do this. Uh, <laughs> then there was the billboard campaign. Yeah, but... I... But we hired a plane with a banner saying, please do not hand the issue over to a bunch of school children. Yeah, that flew over the flat for three days. <laughs> right, that's what that was for. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm finished now, aren't I? I'm completely finished! I'm going to have to do something else, you know? Like... acting or something. <laughs> acting? Yeah, I've always fancied myself as a bit of an actor. Really? Yeah, yeah my, uh, my father did some acting during the war in concert parties, actually. He had to give up because of his hand. Alex, we don't have time for this! <laughs> well, I know what I'm going to do. Great, Jill, decisive action, exactly what we need. <laughs> well, she's probably a bit jealous or something, you know. I mean, I'll probably get uh, convicted of obscenity and there'll be a big high-profile trial and there'll be lots of sort of sympathetic, good-looking chicks there, you know, I'll probably get off with. <laughs> I really hope you don't have to go to jail, Rex. Jail looks very rough on the telly. Very, very rough. Alex, I really don't think I'm going to have to go to jail. Give me that thing you said back at the flat. It's not as if I'm going to... Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> anyway, that's telly jail, isn't it? You know, I really don't think that real jail could be as bad as it is on, say, you know, Dixon of Doc Green. <laughs> I'll tell you something, though. I could stand anything in prison but the lack of sex, you know? <laughs> I mean, imagine not being able to have sex all the time. <laughs> I think you know what I'm going to say now, Ray. In fact, I think it's so obvious that I'm not even going to say it. Yeah, well, I, I can't imagine what you're going to say, Alex. In fact, I, I hope you weren't going to say that me not having sex in prison isn't any difference to me not having sex out here because I don't have sex in the real non-prison world. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I think, in fact, if you go to prison, your chances of having sex will probably increase. 
could be the opportunity you've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for that, Alex, but I really don't think I'm going to stoop that low. I think you might have to, Ray. <laughs> If I may use an analogy from American football, uh, you look more like a wide receiver than a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, well, I am not familiar with American football, Alex, OK? Even though you have conjured up a rather startling image. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, it's, really, it's not really worth me saying this now, but um, I didn't really mean the million pound thing. It was just a joke. <laughs> Horrific word. No point in pretending otherwise. It's a horrific word describing something very mysterious and taboo. But we must ask ourselves, is this an accurate description of Ray? Well, I would say no, because I'm not one of those things. It might look like one, though. The defence might hang on the question, does Ray look like one? I think he looks like one. I think he looks uncannily like one. Yeah, well, I think I look at best vaguely like one, you know? But that's, that's it, really. I mean, do I look like one more than Alex, say? I think Alex looks more like one than me, because he has a very long face. <laughs> All interesting legal arguments and definitions. That's why the law's so fascinating. Oh, I know. I don't come from your world. You probably regard me as very old-fashioned and establishment. But even though I disagree with what you believe in, in fact, most of it is anathema to me, <laughs> I will defend you to the very utmost of my ability. The very utmost, do you hear? <laughs> yeah, where are you going? Sit here with my wife. No, you're not. You're going over there with your friends. <laughs> Go on, move. There's room there. Go on. I'm sorry about that, madam. of the jury, you are gathered here today to witness the trial of Ray Purbs, editor of Mouth magazine. He is charged with gross obscenity. I shall first call on Mr. Simon Goblet for the defence. My lord, it is important in a trial such as this to clearly identify the character of the defendant. It is not likely to be an appealing portrait. But, such is the perverse nature of the legal system, that one often finds oneself defending odious cretins like him, and then I should do that. to the very utmost of my ability, to the very utmost, do you hear? So, is Mr. Purb's mind indeed a cesspit of obscenity? Perhaps no one knows the peculiar sexual peccadilloes and motives of Mr. Purb's better than my first witness, Miss... Cynthia Greening. Oh, God, not Cynthia. <laughs> Call Cynthia Greening. Is there a problem here? Miss Greening has had an accident on her way to the court. <laughs> Great. <laughs> she hit a bus. Surely you mean she was hit by a bus? No, my lad. It appears the main damage was done to the bus. <laughs> She is such a fat lesbian. But since Miss Greeny is unable to attend, I wish to call for a mistrial. Can I have a mistrial? No. Okay. Then I would like to confer with my client. He might have some ideas. I haven't got a clue what to do. Do you have any ideas? What? You're a defence lawyer. Look, you have to realise I'm in a very difficult position. I have to defend somebody who's essentially a complete scumbag. Okay, if that's how you feel, then maybe I should just defend myself. If I think that's a good idea. All those in favour? All those against? Well, that puts me in a rather embarrassing situation. Frankly, I've had enough of this. I'm resigning. To be honest, I rather hoped you'd be found guilty. In fact, I put a huge bet on it. <laughs> Incidentally, that's highly unethical. I'd be grateful if you didn't tell anyone. <laughs> but what are we going to do now? 
Alex, any thoughts? Yes, yes. Um, I was just thinking about animals that hunt prey in the wild. Um, pretty common occurrence. We've all seen footage on TV programmes. Um, I thought it would be a major breakthrough if there was an animal that could kill its prey and then cook it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read about a small owl that can do that. Really? Yeah, he can light a very basic fire. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean, like a sort of owl fire? Yes. Look, 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 look. I don't want to play Old Mother Henty here. Who's Old Mother Henty? Well, she's a character in my novel. You know, she sort of comes in and she talks sense when everyone's talking rubbish. None of us read your novel where it's not even been published. <laughs> OK, I know it's an obscure reference, but this is a serious situation. I don't know much about the law, Ray, but I do know that if you call on Jill and Alex and me to speak in your defence, we will do the very utmost uh, the, uh, to, to, uh, to try and get you off. <laughs> Then there was the poster campaign uh, and the aeroplane flying over the house. No, I've already mentioned that. Um, yes, and I even asked my father, actually, for some advice in, in deterring Ray from his rather ill-advised strategy. Uh, he was involved in uh, counterintelligence in Borneo during the war. I see, you look terribly familiar. Was your father at Harrier? Yes, he was, actually, yes. Herbert Picton Dinch. Yes. <laughs> he, he's an extraordinarily <laughs> gifted pianist. Does he still play? Well, no. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rather amusing anecdote about that, actually, about why he had to... Uh, give up that thing. Do, we, um, do we have time for that? No, we don't, Alex. Of course we have time. Well, um, oh, uh, there's a long version and a short version. Let's have the long version. <laughs> uh, Dad was, was in Borneo at the end of the war, and the sun was absolutely blazing down. And uh, he said to me... <laughs> the extraordinary thing was, his hand completely <laughs> covered the tank. <laughs> Mr. Yemps, how would you describe me? Well, I'm really frightened. I don't. I don't think I can. I, I thought I'd be okay, but I just. I'm cracking up. I... <laughs> All you have to do. Okay, I, I did it. Okay, I did it. You know, what's, what's the point in pretending? I know I, I'll probably go down for a long, long, long time, but I can't live with it on my conscience anymore. Hugo, you're not on trial here. And I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky dog. So I don't understand this. What exactly did you do? I stole the World Cup. <laughs> Miss Sprint, now, we have been going out for a number of years now. No, we haven't. <laughs> yeah, will we? OK, well, on and off, anyway. It's an open relationship. I have to say, I don't know if there's anything I can say that will help Ray, but he did ask me to try anything to impress the jury. Yes, I would appreciate that. So, I can do this. Excellent hatch trickery, Jill. <laughs> now, Miss Greening was going to tell us about your sex life with Mr. Pert. I think it may help the jury if you were to describe in some detail uh, Mr. Pert's activities in this area, and don't be afraid of going into detail. Well, when I first started going out with Ray, it was all fairly orthodox, you know, kissing. <laughs> decision tomorrow? Yes, Alex, it's very likely that I'm going to go to prison. Sorry, are you talking about the judgment? Or... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's going to captain the Davis Cup team? No, Alex, I'm talking about the judgment, you know, I'm going to go to prison. And you know, I don't care, you know, most of my heroes have been in prison. You know, Lenin, Ho Chi Minh, Fidel Castro, I am looking forward to joining them. They're all in Parkhurst, are they? <laughs> no, I, just, I mean in a historical suffering context, you know. I'm really looking forward to going to prison. I really am. I'm going to be like a martyr, you know, and there's going to be like a big campaign to get me out, headed by Jill. Oh, dear. Well, Hector Dobbs invited us all for a drink, so, uh, should we all go and join him? I can't, can I, Alex? Why not? I'm in prison! Ah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll send Hector your best. <laughs> 
Bye, Ray. Bye. Here you go. <laughs> And remember, we can still have mind sex while you're in prison. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, but just don't do that thing that you sometimes do when you're on your own. What's, what's that? You know what I mean, Ray, that making glue without boiling a horse. <laughs> All right, yeah. Bye. You know, I never thought I'd say this, Ray, but seeing you here in prison all banged up forever, it's made me feel really horny. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> In 30 years' time, people will look back at the young people of the 60s and see that they changed the world. OK! We may not have had all the answers, but at least we tried to make a difference! And you know, What's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, look. There's that man who directs traffic with his knob. <laughs> Ray Perbs, you have been found guilty of gross obscenity. It is not my intention to make a martyr of you by sending you to prison. Instead, I am imposing a fine of three pounds and four months community service in Sirencester. Really? Shit. Brilliant. Uh, uh, a full page. Well, fantastic. Great. Well, we'll invoice you and yes. Bye. Great. That's £300 already, this issue. Giving away a free false ink blot really seems to be attracting the advertisers. Good work, Jill. <laughs> That's my, uh, my comic strip seems to, seems to turn out rather well. <laughs> it's a great idea, Alex. The adventures of a wartime piano player with a giant hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you taken out that box of rubbish yet, Hugo? Yep, I'm just gonna one second and I'll just I'll do that. <laughs> I'm back! Ah, oh, Ray. The muzzle of silence they fitted was too loose for the lips of the man future generations will simply call Ray Purbs! <laughs> <laughs> I because it was too loose, you see, I can still speak through the gaps. And I'm ready to change the world! But first! First! I'll take out this rubbish. Love, peace, love, peace, love, love. Peace, love, ha, 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 ha. Peace, love, love, peace, love, love. Peace, love, peace, love, peace. Love, peace, love, peace, 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 peace. Peace, love, peace, love, peace, peace, love, peace, love, peace, 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 love, peace, love. And all that we're saying is love, peace, peace, love, love, peace, love, love. Steady on. Yeah, steady on. You little whipper snapper. Don't do that. Sorry. Seriously, don't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, don't do that, Rose. It's a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, you think it's insipid? Yes. And I think you're going to lose readers with this price increase. <laughs> Incidentally, that's not Noel Redding. That's Mitch Mitchell. You've got the wrong caption on the photograph. <laughs> Your dad got called a hippie today. <laughs> His barber's not so well, so he couldn't get a haircut. What's wrong with him, love? He killed himself. <laughs> oh, dear, why did you do that, then? He was going out of business. No one wants haircuts anymore, thanks to these bloody hippies. <laughs> Never mind, I'm sure he'll be back in business before long. <laughs> hey! You've got nose hair! Yeah, well, it's not uncommon, Mum. Yeah, but it's old man's nose hair. <laughs> it's like your dad's. <laughs> Do you remember the first time we spotted your old man's nose hair, love? Do you remember? Look, right, look. <laughs> Lovely souvenir of the 
onset of one's later years. <laughs> Happy times indeed. Dad's sprouting hair all over the shop, me going through the change. <laughs> <laughs> What's that other thing you got, love? Impudence, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not being able to point at me without using your hands. <laughs> You know, right? There was a time when your dad could have directed traffic with it. You'll never let me forget that, will you? But it was a memorable moment, love. <laughs> yeah, we're all getting old, aren't we, Ray? Yes, we are, Mum. I'm an adult now. And sometimes that responsibility, the responsibility of being an adult, can sometimes be, quite frankly, overwhelming. <laughs> I'm going to go now. Oh, all right, love. Here's your laundry. <laughs> oh, nice and fresh. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Mum. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, desperate Dan. <laughs> he really does get up to some cowboy mystery. <laughs> Look at the size of that cow pie. <laughs> Think. What do we think of what? Slim. Let's all join together. Hoof in hoof, hand in hand. Fin in fin, wing in wing. It's a very good plan. Let's build a love state. Yeah. Here in Notting Hill Gate. Why? Yeah. Chased by those builders again, then. <laughs> they just seem to hate me just because I've got uh, long hair, I think. <laughs> what are you doing, Alex? What? I'm, I, I'm doing what I normally do. Which is what? What? <laughs> do, do you think it will kill you to just once, you know, once give me a hand? <laughs> that reminds me, actually, something very funny happened yesterday. Um, my, uh, my father's hand tends to uh, blow up during the warm weather. What, hand uh, explodes? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it just enlarges, you see. It's extraordinary. Alex, and, um, I am writing an article about the Black Panthers here, OK? I want to hear interesting subjects for articles, fresh ideas for the magazine. I do not want to hear what shape your father's hand mutates into during the summer months. Mm. Some serious changes have to be made here, you know? I think putting up the price of the magazine was a change, but I don't think it was a good change. Yeah, well, people are hardly going to stop buying the magazine just because we put it up by a penny, you know? I just... I get so frustrated, you know? I just... I could... I could... Yes, it's uh, through there. <laughs> Who's that kid, Hugo? That's Adrian. He's my son. <laughs> I, I didn't know you had any kids. No, neither did I. He, he just uh, turned up on my doorstep this morning with a note which said, This is Adrian. He's your son. It's time for you to take responsibility. So I'm going to have to teach him all about road safety and algebra, <laughs> girls, and of course, um, tricks with kites. <laughs> Hugo, um, how old is he? Twelve. And uh, how old are you? Twenty. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Yep. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Look that low. I think you might have to, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> if I may use an analogy from American football, uh, you look more like a wide receiver than a quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, well, I am not familiar with American football, Alex, OK? Even though you have conjured up a rather startling image. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, it's really... Well, it's not really worth me saying this now, but, um... I didn't really mean the million-pound thing. It was just a joke. <laughs> A 
horrific word. No point in pretending otherwise. It's a horrific word describing something very mysterious and taboo. But we must ask ourselves, is this an accurate description of Ray? Well, I would say no, because I'm not one of those things. It might look like one, though. The defence might hang on the question, does Ray look like one? I think he looks like one. I think he looks uncannily like one. Yeah, well, I think I look at best vaguely like one, you know? But that's, that's it, really. I mean, do I look like one more than Alex, say? I think Alex looks more like one than me, because he has a very long face. <laughs> Interesting legal arguments and definitions. That's why the law's so fascinating. Oh, I know. I don't come from your world. You probably regard me as very old-fashioned and establishment. But even though I disagree with what you believe in, in fact, most of it is anathema to me, I will defend you to the very utmost of my ability. The very utmost, dear. <laughs> Where are you going? S sit here with my wife. No, you're not. You're going over there with your friends. <laughs> Go on, move. There's room there. Go on. I'm sorry about that, madam. of the jury, you are gathered here today to witness the trial of Ray Purbs, editor of Mouth magazine. He is charged with gross obscenity. I shall first call on Mr. Simon Goblet for the defence. My lord, it is important in a trial such as this to clearly identify the character of the defendant. Well, I, I didn't actually see that particular edition of Tomorrow's World, but um, I'm sure that the future will be full of that kind of stuff. <laughs> We'd better go. And you promise you won't look at the finished artwork until it's printed and in the shops? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the whole idea. Great, we'll yeah. go then. Bye. Bye. There we are. Cheers, thanks very much. I have to say, Alex, I find those kids slightly frightening. Mm. Now, are you sure we shouldn't just have a little look at the artwork just before we, we send it off to the printers? Alex? Alex, 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 Alex. Alex, 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 Oh, you're back. Great. Oh, fantastic issues. Right, I just hope when we, you know, see what they've done that you won't regret it. Yeah, I bet you a million pounds that I won't regret it, OK? In fact, even if I win, you don't have to give me anything, right? But if I regret it, I will give you one million pounds. I've just got this image of you after you've seen the magazine saying... You know, I didn't really mean the million pound thing, it was just a joke. That's not going to happen, Alex, OK? We've got a deal? Deal. All right, OK. Let's have a look. I begged you not to do it. So did I. Yeah, I but... also wrote to you via the newspapers. I put posters up in your room saying, uh, please, Ray, don't do this. Uh, <laughs> then there was the billboard campaign. Yeah, but, I... but we hired a plane with a banner saying, please do not hand the issue over to a bunch of school children. Yeah, that flew over the flat for three days. <laughs> right, that's what that was for. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm done finished now, aren't I? I'm completely finished. I'm going to have to do something else, you know? Like, acting or something. <laughs> Acting. Yeah, I've always fancied myself as a bit of an actor. Really? Yeah. yeah it's my, uh, my father did some acting during the war in concert parties, actually. He had to give up because of his hand. Alex, we don't have time for this! <laughs> well, I know what I'm going to do. Great, Jill. Decisive action. Exactly what we need. <laughs> well, she's probably a bit jealous or something, you know. I mean, I'll probably get uh, 
convicted of obscenity and there'll be a big high-profile trial and there'll be lots of sort of sympathetic, good-looking chicks there, you know, I'll probably get off with. <laughs> I really hope you don't have to get a jail, Rex. Jail looks very rough on the telly. Very, very rough. Alex, I really don't think I'm going to have to go to jail. Do you remember that thing you said back at the flat? It's not as if I'm going to... Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> anyway, that's telly jail, isn't it? You know, I really don't think that real jail could be as bad as it is on, say, you know, Dixon of Doc Green. <laughs> I'll tell you something, though. I could stand anything in prison, but... It will probably increase. <laughs> it could be the opportunity you've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for that, Alex, but I really don't think I'm going to stoop that low. I think you might have to, Ray. <laughs> If I may use an analogy from American football, uh, you look more like a wide receiver than a quarterback. Yeah, well, I am not familiar with American football, Alex, OK? Even though you have conjured up a rather startling image. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, it's really... Well, it's not really worth me saying this now, but, um... I didn't really mean the million-pound thing. It was just a joke. <laughs> Horrific word. No point in pretending otherwise. It's a horrific word describing something very mysterious and taboo. But we must ask ourselves, is this an accurate description of Ray? Well, I would say no, because I'm not one of those things. It might look like one, though. The defence might hang on the question, does Ray look like one? I think he looks like one. I think he looks uncannily like one. Yeah, well, I think I look at best vaguely like one, you know? But that's, that's it, really. I mean, do I look like one more than Alex, say? I think Alex looks more like one than me, because he has a very long face. <laughs> All interesting legal arguments and definitions. That's why the law's so fascinating. Oh, I know. I don't come from your world. You probably regard me as very old-fashioned an establishment. But even though I disagree with what you believe in, in fact, most of it is anathema to me, <laughs> I will defend you to the very utmost of my ability. The very utmost, dear. <laughs> Where are you going? Sit here with my wife. No, you're not. You're going over there with your friends. <laughs> Go on, move. There's room there. Go on. I'm sorry about that, madam. Gentlemen of the jury, you are gathered here today to witness the trial of Ray Purbs, editor of Mouth magazine. He is charged with gross obscenity. I shall first call on Mr. Simon Goblet. Kids. No, not at all. He, he just uh, turned up on my doorstep this morning with a note which said, This is Adrian, he's your son. It's time for you to take responsibility. So I'm going to have to teach him all about road safety and algebra, <laughs> girls. And, of course, um, tricks with kites. <laughs> you go, um, how old is he? Twelve. And uh, how old are you? Twenty, I'm um, a Virgo. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Yep. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Adrian? Hello. I'm Ray Purbs, and uh, I'm the editor of Math magazine. And um, I was just wondering, how did you find out that Hugo was your daddy? Mum just gave me a note and told me to go to 63 Wenlick Road. Wen Wenlick Road, which is definitely my address. I can't figure it out, Ray. Right, here's the thing. You only moved into that house yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, wh wh what are you getting at, Ray? I think Ray's actually suggesting that Adrian's father is, in fact, the previous occupant. No, well, that can't be that, can it? Yes, it is. <laughs> you said you were the guys from Mouth magazine. Yes, have you, uh, have you read it? Yeah, but it's not really my scene. My friends and I find it rather... 
Insipid. <laughs> steady on. Yeah, steady on. You little whippersnapper. Don't do that. Sorry. Seriously, don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, don't do that, Rose. It's a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you think it's insipid? Yes. And I think you're going to lose readers with this price increase. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, that's not Noel Redding, that's Mitch Mitchell. You've got the wrong caption on the photograph. <laughs> Your dad got called a hippie today. <laughs> <laughs> His barber's not so well, so he couldn't get a haircut. What's wrong with him, love? He killed himself. <laughs> Oh dear, why did you do that then? He was going out of business. No one wants haircuts anymore. Thanks to these bloody hippies. <laughs> Never mind, I'm sure we'll be back in business before long. <laughs> hey! You got nose hair! <laughs> yeah, well, it's not uncommon, Mum. Yeah, but it's old man's nose hair. <laughs> spotted your old man's nose there, love. Do you remember? Look, right, look. <laughs> Excellent hatch trickery, Jill. <laughs> now, Miss Greenie was going to tell us about your sex life with Mr. Perps. I think it may help the jury if you were to describe in some detail uh, Mr. Pepsi's activities in this area, and don't be afraid of going to detail. Well, when I first started going out with Ray, it was all fairly orthodox, you know, kissing. decision tomorrow? Yes, Alex, it's very likely that I'm going to go to prison. Sorry, are you talking about the judgment or...? Yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what, are, you, what are you talking about? Who's going to captain the Davis Cup team? No, Alex, I'm talking about the judgment, you know, I'm going to go to prison. And you know, I don't care, you know, most of my heroes have been in prison. You know, Lenin, Ho Chi Minh, Fidel Castro, I am looking forward to joining them. They're all in Parkhurst, are they? <laughs> no, I, I mean in a historical suffering context, you know. I'm really looking forward to going to prison. I really am. I'm going to be like a martyr, you know, and there's going to be like a big campaign to get me out, headed by jail. Oh, yeah. dear. Well, Hector Dalton might as well for a drink, so, uh, should we all go and join him? I can't, can I, Alex? Why not? I'm in prison! Ah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll send Hector your best. <laughs> Bye, Ray. Bye. Here you go. Well, goodbye, Ray. And remember, we can still have mind sex while you're in prison. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, but just don't do that thing that you sometimes do when you're on your own. What's, what's that? You know what I mean, Ray, that making glue without boiling a horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Bye. You know, I never thought I'd say this, Ray, but seeing you here in prison all banged up forever, it's made me feel really horny. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> In 30 years' time, people will look back at the young people of the 60s and see that they changed the world. OK! We may not have had all the answers, but at least we tried to make a difference!